Okay, I just finished adding a uh, task light to my bandsaw here, and I thought maybe I'd do a review on this bandsaw. I've had it for about four years now, so uh, let's look it over and uh, I'll show you the hits and misses on this bandsaw. This is a Laguna 1412. Let's go. watching on the mark with mark <clears throat> here's a couple of hits this bandsaw has a four inch dust collection port on it and it is right in here where the dust comes so it does a really great job of uh, picking up the dust while I'm making dust and my wood shop is in the basement of my house so it's really important for me to do a good job of dust collection otherwise it would just be intolerable in the rest of the house the other thing we have down here is this one and three quarter horsepower motor so that's super awesome this thing's got a lot of grunt to it here's another neat feature this bandsaw has this is a tension release lever so it's quick release on it when you're done you can take the tension off now the rubber tires in there aren't getting compressed down and maybe flat spotting on half of the wheel and the uh, blade isn't getting stretched the whole time you're not using it either. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this thing because I either forget to take it off or the next time I go to use the bandsaw I forget to tension it again. This thing doesn't show up very much from this side so I don't notice it. The bandsaw does sound different when the tension isn't on and I've been trying to key in on that but I've made several cuts with no tension on it before and one time I even popped the blade off and it put a nice kink in it so like I said it's a great idea but I wished it was on the front side or, or somehow came right in your face while it was off. That would really be a a neat feature if it worked that way. This is one of the things that first attracted me to this bandsaw is the quality in this wheel right here. And it's got a rack. This is for the guide blocks for the blade. And once you stop and you tighten down this screw on the back side, this thing is really stiff. It's super nice. And get ready to have your mind blown. You can watch the red guide go through that window right there and then look up on the top. There's a hole where that rod can come up the, through the top, but they don't just leave it open. It's got this little spring-loaded door on it so you still get good dust collection because there's not just an opening there all the time. I couldn't believe they put that little detail in it. That is super sweet. That really got my attention when I saw that. I mean, this is something that they really put some thought into. The bandsaw I had before this one was a Craftsman 12 inch, and it was the tilting head Craftsman version, which was a cast aluminum head, and uh, it really couldn't hold the, the blade very tight. But what drew me to it was the size of the table and the fact that the table was lower than the typical bandsaw. And it actually worked as a, another table for my table saw. You know, if I had to cut off, it could sit on that. So in that respect, I mean, as a table, it worked out pretty good. But as a bandsaw, it, it, it left a lot to be desired. This one, this has got a cast iron table on it. And it's a good size table. And it has a nice fence, but to tell you the truth, I, I don't hardly ever use a fence on a bandsaw. It's just not the kind of cutting I've done. I haven't really done any real resawing on this bandsaw either, which is kind of what it was made for. So that's something I really can't speak on. It's got easy access to the wheels. The wheels are cast iron. Uh, you can see the tensioner through this window right here. So. They kind of really like their windows on this thing too, but so do I. So, and here's the tension wheel right here. And here's another thing that's pretty slick. When you go to change the blade, that's just on a hinge right there. And this is a magnet. 
so when you put it shut again it snaps nice and tight on there so it isn't going to rattle open again i thought that was pretty brilliant out of the box thinking another thing that drew me to it the uh the dust collection though i'll tell you that was an important thing because my old one the craftsman just had the what is it two and three quarter inch shop vac dust collection port now another thing because I do run dust collection on here you can see there's a little bit of dust in here but that is not bad this isn't this isn't anything you know dust didn't just come falling out of here when I opened this up let's take a look at the bottom okay to get the bottom door open you gotta loosen these other thumb wheels to get it out and what this is right here they're very serious about their dust collection. So after you get past the mechanism for tilting the table, then this goes up and helps seal, seal things up so that where the dust collection has to go right to where the blade is and really pull things away. So we're looking at how much dust we got out of this. And look at the bottom of this. There's almost none. A little bit of dust on the back of the door here. There's a little bit on the top of the door here. And... Uh, I'll get the camera in there. There's a little bit of dust in there, but boy, they really did a, a nice job of keeping the dust out of this thing. There's actually a reduction. It's like a gear drive reduction, but it's a belt drive. So the motor's spinning faster than what the wheel is, so it adds a little more torque to the thing. It also has this nice little brush right here, which has helped keeping this drive wheel clean so it gets a good bite on the blade. So this goes shut, tighten this knob, and then see there's a gap there, but you can push this all the way up and then tighten these down. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Let me try the other hand here. So you can get right up to the underside of the table. And then if you're tilting the table, then you can pull this back and uh, readjust it so that you can still get good dust collection off of it which is important to me. A little bit of dust down here, too. Here's the guide blocks. I'm not sure what kind of material that is. You can see I'm a little bit out of adjustment right now. That's the thing. It seems like they don't stay in adjustment. Let's see how that sounds. You can hear that uh, kink that I put in the blade when I ran it without tensioning it. A feature that they do offer with this saw, and I don't remember if you had to buy a different model or what it was, but they had a foot brake on here. So this thing is running. See how long. Maybe 20 seconds it takes for it to wind down. If that was a table saw, I'd really kind of be alarmed by that. Uh, band saw is inherently a very safe saw, so there's no, as long as you can keep your fingers out of the blade, probably going to be okay. While we're looking at it right here, this is an empty box under here. Wouldn't it be nice if this was a door or maybe some drawers or something? There's storage space under here that is not being used, and that is a cardinal sin in my shop. So there may come a day when I take this panel off and, and do something a little different underneath here. Overall, I don't have complaints about this cabinet because, well, this base, let's call it, because it's, it's sturdy. It's, there's four pieces, two sides and then a front and a back. And they, the legs don't stick out too far. I really hate that in some saws and, and other equipment where the legs stick out real far because they want to make them real sturdy because they're afraid of getting sued. 
and then I smack my foot on it. I just hate that. So this one's nice and trim. Uh, it doesn't stick out past the table. I never hit my foot on this one, so this is this is a miss, but it's also a good base. Let's review. This is for the Laguna 1412. It means it has a 14 inch cutting depth and it has a 12 inch throat. That's what those two numbers mean. This is kind of a base model, even though it has so many nice features. Oh, another thing I didn't point out, it's got a plug on the back for your task light. They do offer a light for this saw. If I was buying it again, I'd buy the factory one, and I would get that brake too. I think that's an important thing to be able to slow that thing down before you walk away from it. Let's go through the hits. This quality construction, I just got no complaints about this at all. I mean, it's welded up real nice. Um, it's uh, super sturdy. I mean, it doesn't flex. It's, it's just an awesome machine. I think they used quality steel in it. The hardware all looks like good quality hardware. The hand wheels are real nice. You can just feel the quality and the bearings on these things. Very nice there. Um, the, the post for the guide blocks is very sturdy and it's on that rack with that handle, you know, to run it up and down. So that thing stays nice and firm. That's a really cool thing. Um, the tension release on it. I like the fact that it has one on it. That's a really nice thing. I know on my Craftsman, I never cranked that thing down when I wasn't using it. I mean, that's a big hassle. But here, it's just, boom, well, there. I just took the tension off. It's no big deal. The trick is remembering to do that. Um, one and three quarter horsepower motor on a bandsaw. That's pretty awesome. Really like that. Uh, the four inch dust port, that is a deal breaker for me. If it doesn't have that, I wouldn't have bought it. It's got to have a four inch dust port on it. Um, I've gone out of my way quite a ways to add four inch dust collection on some of my other tools so that I could get a large volume of air through the machine to really pick up that dust. Cast iron wheels, that's a good thing. That's one of the reasons why it takes so long to wind down. It's got a lot of mass roll in there. Uh, the large table, that was important for me before and caused me to buy that Craftsman that didn't turn out so well. Um, t -t 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 -t. The viewing windows, what a neat idea. How expensive could that have been? Along with that little door on the top, I just thought that was so neat. All right, let's talk about misses. Look how short the misses list is. Storage in the base, that would have been so good. But, well, they didn't do it. Probably a cost thing. It makes sense. I mean, how, how much could a door and a shelf have cost? You know, I could keep extra saw blades down there. Maybe some of my smaller fixtures and uh, miter gauge. Um, the guide block adjustment. There's, it's, you know, it'd be nice if there were some, like, cranks, you know, some wheels, some screws or something. You just sort of loosen up the knobs and then slide them by hand. And the funny thing about them is they don't ever really seem to stay in place. Now, for the use that I have for my bandsaw, it doesn't really bother me that much, but it is something I have noticed. Uh, easy to forget lever. That tension lever is easy to forget. I've turned this thing on probably two dozen times without this lever tightened. And uh, usually I catch it, but many times I've started cutting before I realize that that tensioner isn't tight. And I, I, I don't see a way with the way the doors open on the front to get access to the wheels that the lever could be on the front. But if there was some way that visually it kind of blocked your access to the saw blade or or was just in your face, even if there was an, another thing that came around, I don't know, maybe I gotta get my own magnet and put it on it or something. But, you know, like I said, that kinked that one blade that I got there because I was cutting and uh, it jumped right off the wheels because it didn't have any tension on it. What else is it gonna do? So that's not too bad. I am very happy with this machine. I think I paid around $1,000 for it. I've had it for about
about four years, probably, maybe a little more. Um, if you're going to buy one, this is uh, my experience with this one. I would buy it again. I might uh, look at maybe even getting the, the, the next higher level version. That brake, I think, would really be a good safety feature to get. And the light wouldn't have been expensive. I probably could have afforded that at the time. They also do make some wheels that bolt onto this base. The base is sturdy enough to do that. It's not like a whole nother thing that gets bolted onto it. Um, there's a, it has three wheels when it's wheeled. There's two on the back side and then there's one on the front that's got a pedal on it. But I don't really move my tools a lot. I, I have enough space that I don't really need to move them. So having things wheeled is not as important as it is for some people. But just so you know, there is that feature. That's what I've got. If you thought there was some information here that you didn't have before, hit that like button. If you like my video, please subscribe. Thank you. That are a little bit of a